Welcome back. So we're talking about data science and data-driven inquiry, and machine learning is a major component uh, of data science. So I'm really excited to talk about machine learning, uh, which is one of my favorite aspects of data science. So you've collected all of this data, you've identified questions you want to answer, where you're going to go find the data, you've collected it, stored it, you've cleaned and scrubbed so you know that the data is good and you've gotten rid of all of the fat finger errors and, uh, and, and bugs in your data. And so now you're ready to build models, useful models from your data. Uh, and this is really where all of the magic happens. So machine learning uh, in, in kind of the real world in simple terms is building useful models from data. So models from data. Okay, so you're going to build models hopefully that improve with increasing volumes of data. So in most fields uh, of science and engineering we have increasing volumes of data being collected because of improved measurement technologies and storage, uh, better, you know, better experimental and, and computational techniques. And so what you hope is that with that increasing volumes of data and hopefully better quality data and richer data, your models should improve if you are using the right machine learning architecture for that type of data and those questions that you want to ask and answer. Okay, so models that improve with data, with more data, is kind of what I'm talking about. Now, I really shouldn't have said that this is where all the magic happens because this is a huge misconception uh, in popular culture today is that machine learning is magic, that this is kind of Harry Potter, you know, you wave a magic wand at a problem with data and it just gets solved. And that's really not how how this works at all. So I want to be very clear uh, that machine learning is in no way magic. In reality, machine learning is built on foundational advances in mathematics and computer science that have been happening over decades. Uh, in particular, in optimization and, uh, and regression. So in some sense, Machine learning is also optimization based on data. So you're going to optimize your models uh, to fit the data, to explain the data that you've collected. And often these are going to be regression models. So if you ever want to get under the hood of a machine learning algorithm, if you want to understand what's going on uh, and develop new ones or modify or understand these machine learning algorithms, then there's some math you're going to want to learn. Uh, linear algebra is a pillar of, of data science and machine learning in particular. Optimization theory and statistics. Linear algebra, optimization, and statistics, which regression is a big part of statistics. And these are fields that have been developing for centuries and tremendous strides have been made in the last decades uh, in all three of those fields. And so machine learning is really understandable uh, and you can, you know, it's not magic. You can understand what's going on under the hood. Another aspect I want to point out, uh, a lot of people today think of machine learning as just, uh, just neural networks. And while it's true that neural networks or deep learning uh, is an extremely important part of machine learning, so very, very important aspect of machine learning is neural networks and deep learning, that's not all that machine learning is. So I want to say machine learning is not just neural networks. There are dozens, hundreds of other techniques, optimization and regression techniques to build models from data that are not neural networks and still have a very, very important place uh, in, in kind of the, the suite of techniques that you get to choose from in machine learning. Okay? So we're talking about models that improve from data based on foundational mathematical techniques and linear algebra optimization and regression. And in general, you want these models to be developed, um, you know, and oftentimes these are developed from training data. So you have some data that you've collected and you're going to build a model for how, uh, how that data behaves, what's kind of the rules that govern the data you've collected. And what you hope is that that model generalizes to be useful in the future. So you train this model. Maybe it takes a long time and a lot of resources to collect the data and train the model. Then you hope when you deploy that model in the real world, the predictions are still useful. And so I think about this, uh, you have some inputs, some input variables, you have some outcomes um, or predictions that you want to make based on those variables. And what you hope is that there is a correlation between the input variables you're measuring 
and these outcomes. And what you hope is that you can build this machine learning kind of module that can learn patterns in this data that correlate with outcomes you want to predict in the field, in the real world. Okay? And that's really just kind of the cartoon of what you're doing. You're building a model for how uh, data that's easy to measure correlates with things you really want to know in, in the field. Okay? Um, and we've been developing those kinds of models for a long time. Uh, oftentimes, an expert human will decide on some flowchart of, of, uh, of how information gets processed. They'll write a program, if this, then this. So if then else statements, if A and B, then C. And those kinds of deterministic programs um, are now, in some applications, being replaced by these machine learning programs. They serve the same purpose, but instead of an expert human writing down the rules, the machine learning architecture is a, it's a framework where you can learn those rules or those models to be consistent with data that you've measured and collected. Uh, and so that's a really important aspect, is that in some sense this doesn't require an expert human to write down all of the rules that they know. Now, that's not to say that machine learning does not involve expert humans. I think of this as being very much a tool that uh, is human-guided, okay? And so that's the last thing I want to talk about right now, is that machine learning is very much a human-guided uh, exercise. And some of the ways in which it's human-guided, the human gets to choose, the human expert gets to choose what questions to ask and what data co to collect, what data they think they can answer those questions with, what data. And more specifically, they get to choose what they think are the inputs and the outputs. What do they want to predict and what do they get to measure? So inputs and outputs are really important. And then a last very important uh, ingredient is choosing the architecture. So which um, arch never can spell this live, architecture, which machine learning technique, which framework, which architecture are we going to use to learn models from data? Am I going to pick a, a neural network, a deep neural network? Which one? Am I going to use a support vector machine or a decision tree? And that's where the human-guided expertise really comes in. So they get to decide what questions they want to answer, what process they want to model, what's the data, the inputs and the outputs, and importantly, they get to choose the architecture. What type of machine learning framework do they use to build these models from data? So we're going to talk about these various aspects uh, of kind of what are the architectures, what do we want out of machine learning algorithms. We're, we are going to talk about what neural networks are so we get a little bit better understanding of, of what they can and can't do, and that's all coming up.